They don't feel anything during the treatment. There's no discomfort. Some of our patients just listen to music on, the, on a headset while they're being treated. It's a tool that fits into the armamentarium of how we already treat patients. As a surgeon, I want to ensure that we are uh, de really uh, delivering our patients uh, surgical-like uh, precision uh, and making sure that we're trying to minimize their side effects and yet still delivering them an a effective cancer procedure. One of the advantages of the CyberKnife technology is its ability to really track even sub-millimeter movements. That technology doesn't exist with other modalities of radiation. So instead of putting a 20 millimeter margin around the prostate, we typically put about a 3 millimeter margin around the prostate. So we're radiating less of the bladder, less of the um, rectum, and we're able to give the radiation much faster in five days as opposed to nine weeks. After the treatments are over, patients uh, can go back to any activities they want, whether they go back to work, go on a vacation, uh, and that's one of the real attractions of patients is, is I've had patients having to go to Europe the following week and they're able to do that after the cyber knife treatment. And the nice thing about the cyber knife in contrast to our conventional radiation is that since we're giving the radiation so much faster, by the time the side effects have kind of come and gone for our regular radiation treatments, they would just be starting for the other forms of radiation. We now have data emerging from research studies that are sh that's showing that the side effects from cyber knife for prostate cancer are less than those seen with external beam, with seed implants, and with proton beam radiotherapy, while the biologic dose that we're delivering is as good or better than any of these. A lot of our patients are candidates for surgery, and they choose to have CyberKnife because they don't want to go to the operating room if they have another alternative that is as good or better even. The most commonly recommended treatment for addressing uh, early stage prostate cancer is the radical prostatectomy. And while it's an effective treatment, there are some potential long-term side effects from it. Some patients end up with incontinence. Probably over half of patients end up with erectile dysfunction. It's a major surgery. Even if one performs a robotic prostatectomy, the incisions are smaller, but still the surgeon has to cut out the prostate. So there are the patients that can't have surgery. There are patients that have already been radiated once and we can retreat them. And then there are patients who just don't want to have more aggressive therapy, particularly our older patients. So it's not unusual at all for me to treat a person in their 80s or 90s. Not unusual. That's an everyday thing for us. But I think it's important and it's our job as physicians to make sure that our patients have all the options available to them. Uh, especially if there may be an advantage to them. And we believe that well, with this technology, there may be a real advantage, particularly in the short course in which they can be treated for their prostate cancer. We're thinking about treating cancer in totally different new ways, and it's no longer one size fits all. Everything is individualized and tailored to the individual uh, in what you offer them and how you go about offering them the treatment, and it's really an exciting time to be practicing radiation oncology.